Hey there, YouTube family. Today we're going to be painting this little fall scene right here, and as you can tell, there's a second and a third version of it. Sometimes when I do these paintings, I I like where they're going, I like the idea, but I know that I can either teach it better or I can do a better job. Both of which happened this time. I ended up doing it three times, but I'm really happy with the lesson we kind of came out with having. So today we're painting this version, not this one or this one, but it'll be a really good time. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help. If you finish the piece and you'd like to share with me, you can do that over on the Patreon community tab. And as per usual, if you'd like the digital sketch to help with the drawing process, you can find that over on Patreon. And the full hour long lesson version of this is also up over there. It's another fall scene. I love these fall scenes. If you look outside my window, and I'll, I'll take you. As you can tell, the leaves are getting more and more orange, and my partner, Maya, just painted, <laughs> just painted, just planted all of these beautiful little basil plants here in water, and it was a nice little addition to the studio. It has nothing to do, the basil has nothing to do with the video, but I just thought it was a fun addition to the studio, and you know, those things are worth the worth sharing. But that said, before I continue rambling for too much longer, again, I'm here to help. If you need any help, you can share it with me over on Patreon. You can find the full hour long lesson and over 30 others over on Patreon, just like these. And I've officially rambled. It's happened. Let's get into the video. Here I'm taking some titanium white and I'm applying it across the base of our horizon, moving back in horizontal strokes. I'm also blending it upwards slightly. Now I'm going to get a little bit of additional water. Again, only putting the tip of my brush in there. I'm going to grab some additional titanium white, apply that to the bottom, begin to blend it upwards. It's very watery and thin at this point, which is good because I want it to be more thick at the bottom and more thin at the top. That's the case because I'm going to take some primary blue. I'm going to begin applying it to the top, as you can see here. And with these horizontal strokes, I'm going to begin blending downwards slightly, just like that. The bottom isn't a pure white, but it's very close. It does have a little bit of blue in it. Grab a little bit more. Apply that to the top. I also kind of want to get the edges a little bit darker, a little bit more blue, and create a bit of a vignetting effect. So I start generally at the top, and then I'll blend down to the corner. But this middle area is still going to be pretty bright. Now I'm going to switch over to my old square headed brush. This is essentially a flat headed brush that I peel back the bristles on and it renders these pieces that kind of go out in different directions. So when we make a dabbing motion, we render a litany of implications as opposed to a single stroke. Now I want a bit of a pinkish purple tree in the background here. So I'll grab a good amount of red, tiny bit of blue. The blue is a much stronger pigment than the red. So if you want a purple or something akin to that, you'll need to use a lot more red than blue, generally. See? Put some more red back in there. And that's a very stark pigment. Let's get a good amount of white. That's much more what I'd like. The value matches much more so with what we already have on the canvas. I'm applying all of this in this tapping motion. As you can see, we're getting a bunch of different impressions made on the canvas. Now, I want something a little bit darker, so I'll mix in a little bit of the red, or rather the purple, and I'll apply that to the bottom area, as you can see here. This area is going to be receiving a lot less light, so it should be innately much darker. And now I'm going to let it sit and dry for about a minute. In the meantime, we'll work on some clouds. I'm going to do so 
with the smaller round-headed brush as you can see here. And I'll grab a little bit of titanium white. I'll move it over here. And I want these clouds to be fairly transparent at first. So I'm going to grab some extra water, mix it in there. You see how it quickly became something that could be drippy as opposed to a consistent paint? That's what I want. I'm going to start by creating some clouds that kind of wrap around the sky and frame our painting. Because it's so wet, it's going to be very transparent. And that works really nicely because it creates a subtle cloud. I'm moving my brush in a circular motion for a lot of the larger applications as it'll create something much softer. And if you find that it's too transparent, you can grab some titanium white void of water and you can reapply that. Now I'm going to move back to my old square headed brush at this point. It's just about dried. So I can go in and work on some new pigments. And I want to work in some green trees in the back here. But we don't have green on our palette. How do we make that? We use some primary yellow, a good amount, tiny bit of primary blue. Now I'm going to want to wash it out a bit, so we'll grab some white. It is in the far distance, of course. But right there, it's too saturated for that pigment, right? If they were to go together, this would really stand out. So what I need to do is get a little bit of Mars black, but I'll just get it with the corner here. See? Move that in. We have a nicer olive. And now I have something that's a similar value to that, right? It's not too dark. It's not too light. It's not too saturated just right for the background. And I'm applying it with this tapping motion and portions of the pink are showing through, which I really like. Now, as we move forward in the painting, generally you want things to get more saturated and you want them to have a more heightened value. So it's going to get more green and we're also going to incorporate more stark colors, like more blacks, more dark greens. Now, with that said, let's move forward. So. Going to take some additional black, going to take some white, or rather yellow. Going to make a dark green here. Going to work my way around some rocks. Use that tapping motion once it's applied. And we can go back in and add highlights. We're just building a base right now. Here you can see, tapping on some highlights. And again there. So it doesn't look as stark. It gets darker as we move downwards. So we left off just adding in the highlights here. And our grass, our foliage, our bushes, it isn't done because we'll need to go back and add in more highlights. We'll need to make it cohesive and we'll need to layer on top of our trees and rocks. But it's a good foundation that will help us move into the next section. And that is the trees in the far distance. So for these, we're going to be using a smaller square headed brush, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush, I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt umber, I'll move that over here, take a little bit of titanium white, thicken the pigment. Titanium white is a very thick pigment, burnt umber is a fairly thin pigment, you'll probably want to thicken it up a little bit. Then I'll take a tiny bit of Mars black, mix that in there. As we can see, the Mars black is very strong, but that's a nice mixture. So I'll grab a little bit of additional water so we can spread the paint nice and smoothly. And then I'll go back to the tree that I drew and I'll begin to draw this in, just following the lines. Now, this is going to be a birch tree. So I'm going to take some titanium white. I'm going to apply it like this. So I'm going to the edge and I drag backwards or I do a bit of a tapping motion. I'm not dragging the brush down the tree. I'm trying to get some texture. I'm trying to create an interesting application. Just dragging back like that. 
And now we want to add some highlights to the edge of the tree. So here I have some burnt umber, some titanium white, and that's a very bright color in comparison to that, right? But when I apply it on here, it won't be. Not to such an extent. I'm applying this in the same way that I did the birch tree bark. I'm doing a bit of a tap and then a little bit of a drag. I'm not going from the top of the tree downwards or the bottom of the tree upwards. I'm doing it with this textured application. Now I fully let that tree dry and in the meantime I cleaned my water and my brushes. I also added a little bit of a yellow back to my palette because this one has some black in it and I wanted to ensure that I was working with a very clean yellow for this next step. So what I'm actually going to do here, I'm going to take a palette knife. You could take an additional brush, I just don't want to use my old square headed brush. I'm going to take some yellow, put it down there, clean off my palette knife, I'm going to get some red, Mix the two together. Goal is to create a nice orange. I'm also going to grab a little bit of burnt umber. This is going to darken it just a little bit. And there, I have a nice October warm, earthy orange. I'm going to take my old square headed brush. I'm going to take a lot of this pigment and I'm going to begin working it around this tree. We can even interject a little bit of orange into the background here. Make it a little bit more eclectic. Now we're at the point where all of this still needs to dry, all of this still needs to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to move into the water of the painting. And we're just going to do the base layer of it as well. Right now that's what we're doing. Base layer, base layer, base layer. We'll go in and widen the real highlights in a little bit. But right now, we'll get some water on our brush. We'll get a good amount of this primary blue. Move it over here. Get some Mars black. Get a little bit of titanium white. We're making a darker desaturated blue and I'll begin to work that in here. And I'm working on the layers of water that are going to be on top. There are going to be portions of water that are falling and I'm skipping those right now. There we go. Clean that off well. Switch over to my medium sized square headed brush. Going to get a much darker mixture of what we were just using. Going to fill in the areas with falling water now. Now that we've let that dry, I'm going to move back into that tree, this time with a mid tone. So I'm going to grab yellow as we have before, I'm going to grab some red. I'm not using any burnt umber in this mixture. I want it to be much more vibrant. As you can see here, that is exactly what we are achieving. So we're just going to build it up slowly. And we'll begin to apply it to the edges that we think will be receiving light. Now I'm going to take some titanium white, make it a little bit thicker, more thick, make it a little bit more yellow. And you can see we go from a dark to a medium to a light. So this should really stand out, comparatively. So I'm going to begin this time with that regular orange, not the burnt umber orange. I want this, when it's done, to be much more vibrant and orange than that tree. This means that we'll probably have to layer on a good amount of paint, make it nice and thick. So, this time I'm not going to use a palette knife, just to show you that you don't need one. Mix up some orange. 
Giving it a bit of a red base can also be a good way of doing this because the red's very saturated. And then you can build the lighter colors on top of it fairly easily. I'm just going to take some of our black. And I'm going to cover all of our rocks, even the ones in the background. And then later, I'll go back in and I'll brighten them and I'll desaturate them. I can't add the highlights to any of these until they've dried. So we're going to need to take a break from that and we'll go up to here yet again in the meantime. So I have my old square headed brush. I have some red, some yellow, make a nice vibrant orange there. Begin applying that to the edges. Just like so. Starting to stand out. Much more saturated than over there, as you can see. Now we can probably go back and rework on the rocks. So I'm going to keep this brush. I'm going to take some titanium white, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, orange. It's a nice highlight color. Sticking to the edges, being nice and sharp. Going to create some ledges on our rocks. There we are. Some little inner pieces that'll be catching light. That's interesting. We can be a little bit more impressionistic in the background. Now we are going to take our smaller square headed brush, ensure that it is damp. I'm going to grab some titanium white, a little bit primary blue, make a nice bright mixture. I'm now going to apply this to the edge of the water and blend backwards in Z shapes. Just like that. It's going to be very subtle at first because we have a lot of water and we have the darker layer, but the more we do, the more it'll build up. So we'll do it again now. And as you can see, we already have a much more notable highlight. Now we need to ensure that the water is also falling. We'll probably have to go back and re-add in highlights here as it dries, as it will dry a little bit more dark, a little bit more transparently. But in the meantime, we're going to switch over to the smaller round headed brush. I'm going to grab some of that white, mix it in with a little bit of our blue. I'm going to pick some areas, have it begin to fall. I'm doing a lot of it as a tapping motion at the top, and then I'll bring different portions down in different amounts. Just like that. Now I'm going to switch over to that old square headed brush. I'm going to take some yellow. I'm going to take a little bit of blue. Just a little bit. I'm going to take some titanium white. Maybe a little bit of black. I'm going to work this into the background. I feel like it just needs a little bit more green. And even put some reflections in the water. Hey there, it's Ryan O'Rourke. I truly hope you enjoyed today's little extra video. It was essentially a cut up version of one of the many hour long lessons which we offer over on patreon.com. Over there you'll also find digital sketches of the 10 minute painting lessons, digital sketches of these hour long painting lessons, and a bunch of reference photos as well. So if any of that interests you, or if you just want to support the channel, go over there and check it out. It is a pleasure to make these long form videos and I love to share them with all of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next Saturday with a new video and above all, as always, stay creative.